Automotive pop quiz. Who remembers the strap line used by Volvo in their advertising during the late 80s? Those who do might guess where I'm going with this, and, well, for those who don't, hang on until the end and all will be revealed, because this Fiat Abarth 131 started life just as unassumingly as any Volvo. As mundane a family saloon as you can possibly imagine, the original iteration of the 131 was available in a three-door, a five-door, or as an estate wagon. It was an entirely practical three-box design that sold very successfully to over one and a half million entirely practical customers from 1974 to 1984. Thankfully, the marketing department at Fiat were keen to repeat the success that they had had with the 124 Abarth Rally and set about transforming the car into a true competition contender. Soliciting help from Bertone to restyle the bodywork and Abarth to work on the engine and the mechanicals, the car underwent an extraordinary metamorphosis. The result was a 900 kilogram Group 4 rally car with nearly 240 brake horsepower from its normally aspirated inline four cylinder, two litre twin cam engine. The car made its debut in the 1976 World Rally Championship and soon dominated, with drivers such as Walter Roll and Marku Allen helping Fiat to three World Constructors titles and two drivers titles between 1977 and 1980. With 18 overall victories, the 131 Rally Abarth soon became a fan favourite but it had to earn that respect the hard way because it was perceived as the car that bumped their cherished Lancia Stratos from the series and ended its period of dominance. Meanwhile, 400 road-going examples of course had to be built to satisfy the homologation requirements and customers were offered a choice of either a street version or a full competition specification. As is so often the case, it's the Stradale versions that seem to develop cult-like status with the passing of time. And it's that variant which I'm very privileged to be driving today. It's less potent than its competition sibling with only 138 brake horsepower to play with. But it still weighs in under a ton thanks to a lightweight alloy cylinder head the use of aluminium for the doors and fiberglass for the front bonnet, rear boot lid and those magnificent Bertone styled flared wheel arches, front splitter and rear wing. Oh, that glorious induction noise is courtesy of the single Weber carburetor fueling the same two litre inline four cylinder twin cam 16 valve engine as the competition derivative. The handling is delicious, especially on these twisty Tuscan roads, forever surprising with unpredictable lumps and bumps. And we've got Abarth to thank for that, because it was their work that is considered to have elevated this car above its competitors, particularly in world rallying. It was quite normal at the time to have cars with independent front suspension, but it was Abarth's work upgrading the rear end from a live axle to full independent suspension with coil springs, dampers, trailing arms and an anti-roll bar that was really pivotal. Remember, at that time, a Mark II Escort was still running with a solid rear axle and leaf springs. As tempting as it is to eulogise about every aspect of the Stradale, it would be remiss of me to ignore its one glaring omission, which is the lack of a limited slip differential. The chassis is simply too capable to go without. And of course, the 
competition cars do feature a limited slip differential and therefore many Stradales have had them retrofitted, which is definitely something I would consider doing if this were my car. But in every other way, driving this car is a wonderfully nostalgic, visceral experience. You feel everything, every flutter of the carb as its resonance ricochets through the chassis and the way the weight transfers in the corners melting from side to side fore and aft and the gearbox which is just so precise it's as though the lever is directly connected to the requested cog While the Stradale could definitely do with a little more power, I can well understand why the competition car that it homologated won so many World Rally Championships. And of course, it's beating heart, this fabulously revvy little two litre engine, which delivers its power in such an earnest and linear way. We're running on original Pirelli P7s, which is the tyre that really epitomised that Group 4 era of rally cars and homologation specials. The owner of this car is particularly proud. The car is wearing such original rubber, which as you can imagine, makes the handling ever so slightly suspect. Aesthetically, I love the menacing presence of its brutalist lines, but I totally understand that the styling might not be for everybody. So I'll conclude with my nod to those ad men at Volvo by plagiarizing their wonderfully honest words. It may be boxy, but it's good. And in this case, it's very, very good.